We are well aware of the numerous objections that can and have been raised about the futility of long-term citizen activism for multilateral structural change. We acknowledge what English philosopher David Hume referred to as the natural depravity of mankind, by which he meant that nothing is more certain than that men are, in a great measure, governed by interest, and that even when they extend their concern beyond themselves, tis not to any great distance, nor is it usual for them, in common life, to look farther than their nearest friends and acquaintance. We acknowledge the insight of public choice theory, where political outcomes conflict with the preferences of the public because, for a small investment, special interests can secure immense benefits that are immediate and direct, while the cost to the taxpayer is diffused and costly to prevent, so that it becomes unnatural, as even Rousseau saw, for a majority to rule. For a majority can seldom be organized for united and specific action, and a minority can. We acknowledge that three-fifths of the electorate is understood by political strategists as low-information voters. Seventy-five million Americans who rely on talk radio and less-than-factual hearsay from friends and family members to shape their political decisions, seemingly verifying Arthur Ferdinand Lundberg's opinion that not all people are really interested in government because many don't understand it at all. Some are incapable of understanding it. Others, although capable, just don't want to bother themselves with it. And we acknowledge that most people, when given the choice between the comfort of the status quo and truth, will choose to remain in comfort. Nevertheless, although we concede all of this, we also know, as Congressional Representative Ron Paul has said, that it is the energy in a small group of people that really leads nations. We know, too, as Nobel historian Will Durant has written, that civilization is the precarious labor and luxury of a minority. And we suspect that now may be the time when the energy of a small minority of Americans may usher in an American Renaissance. Now may be the time when a small minority of Americans is the spark that restores the American dream. And now may finally be the time when a small minority of Americans can convincingly persuade their fellow citizens to accept truth, because the comfort of the status quo is becoming ever less comfortable. Will you be a part of that small minority?